Israel asks Lebanon to remove militant Hezbollah tent from tent's border area. The commander of the UN peacekeeping force in Lebanon, Major General Aroldo Lazaro, conveyed an Israeli request to remove a tent set up by Hezbollah in a disputed area along the Lebanon-Israel border. Israel claims that Hezbollah had set up tents inside Israeli territory, but it remains unclear what the tents were for. The area where the tents were erected, Cheba Farms in the Kfar Chuba Hills, was captured by Israel from Syria in 1967 but is claimed by Lebanon. Lebanese officials insisted that Israel should withdraw from the town of Qajar, which they consider Lebanese territory. In recent weeks, tensions have risen. With Israel reportedly building a wall around the Lebanese part of Qajar. Hezbollah has criticized these actions, and recent incidents, such as the firing of an anti-tank missile near Qajar, have heightened concerns. Israel views Hezbollah as a significant threat, given the large number of rockets and missiles it possesses. Biden reportedly fumes and spews curses at staff in private, no one is safe. According to a new Axios report, President Biden is said to have a short temper and frequently uses profanity-laden rants to lash out at staff members who don't meet his expectations. Aides reportedly meet with him in groups to diffuse potential tension. While some view Biden's outbursts as a desire for accuracy and competence, others see it as a challenging experience. This report follows previous instances where Biden's public persona has been undermined. In addition, Biden is facing criticism for potentially revealing sensitive military information during a recent interview. The White House responded by stating that production levels of munitions will increase soon. Foxconn dumps $19.5 billion Vedanta chip plan in blow to India. Taiwan's Foxconn has pulled out of a $19.5 billion semiconductor joint venture with Indian conglomerate Vedanta, dealing a setback to Prime Minister Narendra Modi's chip-making plans for India. The companies had signed a pact last year to establish semiconductor and display production plants in Gujarat. Foxconn cited unspecified reasons for its decision, while Vedanta stated its commitment to the semiconductor project and efforts to fulfill Modi's vision. Concerns about incentive approval delays and cost estimates raised by the Indian government reportedly contributed to Foxconn's withdrawal. The move is seen as a setback to India's, make in India, push for chip manufacturing. Ukrainian intelligence posts intriguing video saying, it's time for payback. On July 10, Ukraine's main intelligence directorate shared a video on Telegram featuring Ukrainian military personnel in the countdown. The video shows fighting between the Ukrainian military and Russian troops, as well as the work of Ukraine's defense forces. The video ends with the phrase, it's time for payback, sparking speculation on Ukrainian social media. Ukrainian officials have highlighted the ongoing success of the Ukrainian army's counteroffensive, with the liberation of additional territory in the east and south. The defense ministry announced the liberation of nine settlements in June, including Krasnohorivka. Donetsk Oblast, previously occupied by Russia since 2014. Ukrainian Commander-in-Chief General Valery Zaluznyi expressed frustration with Western opinions that the counteroffensive is progressing slower than expected, emphasizing that each day and meter gained comes at a cost of bloodshed. N. Korea's food situation still bad despite uptick in trade with China, South says. According to South Korea's unification minister, North Korea's food situation remains bad despite increased trade with China. The country has been plagued by food shortages, worsened by natural disasters and the impact of COVID-19 border closures. While imports from China have helped alleviate shortages, distribution problems have led to hunger deaths in some regions. China's exports to North Korea have more than doubled, including items like sugar, soybean oil, and rice. During the pandemic, North Korea sealed its borders, leading to increased defector arrivals in South Korea as COVID-19 restrictions eased. However, concerns remain about China's repatriation of North Korean defectors, as many fear the consequences of returning to their home country. The number of defectors arriving in South Korea significantly dropped in 2020. CNN's Tapper, Trump has knocked everybody in the news media off. CNN anchor Jake Tapper acknowledged that former President Trump continues to pose challenges for media organizations covering him, particularly due to his attacks on the media. Tapper stated that Trump disrupted news organizations by criticizing and targeting them. Despite being the target of Trump's attacks, Tapper defended CNN's coverage of the former president, including their decision to host a town hall with him. 
Tapper emphasized the need to cover Trump and maintain an objective approach while acknowledging the impact Trump had on media organizations during his presidency. Tapper also commented on changes within CNN, including the replacement of former CEO Jeff Zucker with Chris Licht, expressing support for Licht's mission to provide balanced news coverage. Overall, Tapper mentioned that morale at CNN is currently high. China security official in line to lead HK agency, SCMP says. China is reportedly set to appoint Zhou Ji, a provincial law enforcement official, as the head of its agency overseeing Hong Kong. This move indicates that Beijing continues to prioritize security in the financial hub, for years after protests rocked the city. Zhou Ji is being introduced to the top job during a trip with the current head of the Hong Kong Macau Affairs Office, Xia Baolong. Xia is expected to stay on for a few more months while the office is restructured, paving the way for Zhou to eventually take over. China has been tightening its control over Hong Kong since the 2019 pro-democracy demonstrations, implementing a national security law, suppressing dissent, and restructuring the electoral system. The U.S. has criticized China's handling of Hong Kong, citing concerns about free speech, press freedom, and the erosion of local autonomy. Zhou Ji, who has no prior experience with Hong Kong or Macau, was named deputy director of the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office by the Communist Party's Politburo. Turkey's Sweden demand rocks NATO show of unity on Ukraine war. During a NATO summit focused on supporting Ukraine against Russia and Ukraine's bid to join the alliance, Turkey's ultimatum on Sweden's membership request created a rift among NATO members. NATO agreed to simplify Ukraine's accession process by dropping the requirement for a formal roadmap of reforms. However, Turkey's President Erdogan stated that he would only support Sweden's NATO candidacy if EU members revive Turkey's EU negotiations. This demand threatened to strain Turkey's relationship with its Western partners amid the ongoing security crisis in Ukraine. Germany's Chancellor Scholz and NATO Secretary General Stoltenberg emphasized that Sweden meets the requirements for NATO membership. And the issue should be separate from Turkey's EU application. While the discussions unfolded, Ukraine welcomed a step forward as NATO allies decided to drop the requirement for Ukraine to complete a membership action plan. However, there were divisions among NATO leaders regarding providing Ukraine with a clear path to membership. As the diplomatic discussions took place, Ukrainian forces made advances against Russian positions, but an aid hub in southern Ukraine was hit by Russian shelling, resulting in casualties. Hunter Biden prosecutor says Justice Department didn't interfere in probe. Delaware U.S. Attorney David Weiss, the federal prosecutor overseeing the case against Hunter Biden, denied allegations made by an IRS whistleblower that the Justice Department hindered the investigation into Joe Biden's son. Weiss stated in a letter to Senator Lindsey Graham that he never sought special counsel designation from Attorney General Merrick Garland. He clarified that he had discussions regarding potential appointment that would allow him to file charges in a different district if necessary. Weiss assured lawmakers that he was given complete authority to bring charges in any jurisdiction. Last month, Hunter Biden was charged with two misdemeanor tax offenses, and he is expected to plead guilty. Critics, particularly Republicans, have questioned why more severe charges were not filed. However, Weiss's response debunks claims that the Justice Department impeded the investigation. Biden lets American military info slip during live interview, sparking backlash. During an interview, President Biden mentioned that the United States is low on 155mm artillery ammunition rounds, leading to criticism and concerns about national security. Biden defended sending cluster munitions to Ukraine as a temporary measure while waiting for more ammunition to be produced. Conservatives on social media expressed outrage, questioning why the president would announce a shortage to adversaries. Some pundits and experts raised concerns about the impact on U.S. readiness and questioned the feasibility of continued support for Ukraine. The White House later clarified that the U.S. is not running out of ammunition and stated that everything sent to Ukraine is in excess of the military's reserve requirements. Despite the clarification, criticism and skepticism persist regarding the administration's handling of the ammunition situation.